my name is Kai. I'm with the Outdoor Program at the University of Wyoming and today I'm going to be talking about the MSR Whisper Light, how to use it, and how to do some basic repairs. So first you'll need to get a fuel bottle and the stove comes with a pump that you'll put in the fuel bottle. I'm going to screw it on super tight, super tight so that it doesn't leak. And then you'll need to pressurize it. So you'll pump it. It typically takes around 20 pumps, but that depends on how full your fuel bottle is. So if it's all the way full, um, it'll take less, but if it's near empty, it'll probably take more than 20. Um, but you know it's been pressurized when you push it down and it naturally comes up a little bit. I don't have any fuel in this right now, um, so I'll just be kind of like talking through how to light the stove. So this is your fuel line right here. This is what you need to attach to the pump. There's a little hole right here, and this part is going to go in there. There's a little knob right here, which you normally want to be facing out the same direction that this is. Um, you'll just push it in like that. Then you take this piece, and you're going to flip it over to the other side. There's a little notch right there in the gray part that it goes into. So you pop it in right there, and that keeps it attached. So then when you light the stove, first you'll need to prime it. Um, so what you're going to do is you're going to twist this part right here, which allows the fuel to come in through the bottle and through the fuel line. It'll start to collect in the basket and it'll come out in a liquid form. So once you start seeing it coming out, you're going to want to turn the fuel off and then light it right there. And this is priming your stove. Basically, you want it to get warm enough to when you turn the fuel on again, it comes out in a gas form, um, and then you'll light that. So once it's finished burning off, you're going to turn the fuel back on, and it should be coming out in a gas, and it'll come out up here around these coils, and you'll light it right there. And that's how you light your stove. It's pretty simple and straightforward. The stove does come with a few things. It comes with this nice ground cover. I normally like to put this underneath my stove, especially if it's on like a super sandy or uneven surface. This keeps any dirt away from your stove. It also can help kind of level out the surface a little bit which just gives you a little bit more stability um, and then you also get a little windscreen so this helps to insulate the heat especially when it's really windy outside um, and you just kind of like wrap it around the stove um, and if you have a really big pot sometimes it's nice to use the windscreen because uh, it can again offer just a little bit more stability in regards to that so there's a little divot right here which goes where the fuel line is attached to the fuel canister and then the rest just kind of sits on the ground right there so that's pretty handy uh to have and to use especially in wyoming because it's really windy here um they also they come in these nice nylon bags i like to keep my stove in here whenever i'm not using it um it just helps to keep it clean and prevents any dirt from getting in it, um, which is really good. Also, whenever I take the fuel cap off, I like to put it in here to prevent dirt getting around there and then getting into uh, the gas. Um, so, yeah. So, I'll just go over some basic repairs now that you can do on your stove when you are in the backcountry if you have any malfunctions with it. So the first thing that I normally do if my stove isn't working very well is I'll just shake it. There's a little shaker needle that's right in here and normally if there's something that's clogging up the fuel line just giving it a good shake um, will cause that to come loose and then your stove will work. Uh, so normally after doing that I'll try lighting it again and see if it works. If that doesn't, then what you can do is you can pull out the fuel line. Most of the problems that you're going to have with your stove are just going to be something is on the fuel line, which is causing it not to work very well. So you can just like pull it out. If you're having difficulty pulling out, the stove does come with this little tool right here. So there's three holes right there and the smallest one you can thread into the fuel line and if you kind of twist it a little bit that'll help give you a little bit more traction and sort of like a handle to pull the fuel line out. 
it's not super hard to pull out though so you shouldn't have any problems with that and then you can clean the fuel line off with some water or with a uh, clean cloth or a rag uh, most of the dirt is going to be gathered right here where this curve is that goes up through here so after you clean it wipe it off you rinse it off with a little bit of water um, then you can just throw it back into the stove like that and it normally goes in pretty easy um, sometimes you'll get a little bit of resistance whenever it starts going around this part um, and if it's being kind of difficult, you can use this tool again and just throw it through and then you bend it and it helps just give you a little bit more traction to push it down in. So, yeah. The fuel line is pretty easy to clean and maintain. Um, and it'll probably be your biggest source of issues if it does get dirty. But if that doesn't work, and your stove still isn't lighting. Um, what you can do is you can unscrew this part right here and you can clean this out. This is where the fuel will kind of well up whenever you're priming the stove. And you can also pull this part out. So this is where the fuel line it comes through and this is where the fuel is being dispensed. So you can kind of like clean this part off. You can also unscrew this and the shaker needle is in here. Whenever you take the shaker needle out to clean it, I would recommend um, putting all of your loose parts somewhere on a flat surface or a piece of cloth where you can easily see them um, so that you don't lose anything. Because if you lose it, then your stove probably won't work very well. Um, yeah, and then whenever you're done cleaning that, you can screw this cap back on. And then it just slides back in here. So this part goes in there and then this goes in this slot right here. You just pop it down in there. And then this screws back on. then I'd recommend that you test your stove again, see if it's still not working. If it's not, then you can unscrew this right here and you can clean out these individual coils. Um, if there's any residue on them or anything that's preventing the gas from coming through properly. So that's how you can do some just pretty simple repairs whenever you are in the back country. I would recommend whenever you are cleaning your stove in the back country that you're super mindful of your impact on the environment. So always making sure that you're following whatever LNT principles that um, are expected in the area that you're in. Um, so, but a few things that you can use to clean the stove are white gas. White gas is nice because it evaporates super quick and also doesn't introduce any foreign material to your stove. Like if you're using soap, you would want to make sure that you clean off all the soap, all the soap before you use it. Um, however, a lot of times when you're camping, you don't have a lot of severe white gas to just use to clean your stove. And so in that case, I would recommend using some uh, hot water and some steel wool. Um, you will want to make sure that when you dispose of your great water that you do so 10 feet away from any body of water and you disperse it so it's not all going in the same place. Um, if that's still not working for you, you can use some hot soapy water. I would recommend using soap if you can when you're in the backcountry and waiting until you can uh, get home or somewhere where it's easier to dispose of the soapy water without impacting the environment. But yeah, those are just a few uh, quick ways to repair your stove. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to us at the Outdoor Program and have a great day.